the uh, really uh, with the eventing program, um, this was a uh, uh, an idea that was thought about uh, ten years ago, and as always, takes a while to get going. Um, and there are, we're really in um, having uh, in the middle of really thinking about it in two phases. Um, there is a very established six or seven years old now, uh, four and five year old program, um, and down. And um, that has grown um, over the years. This last year um, was by far the most successful um, that we've had. Um, that championship is held at the Fair Hill um, CCI, nas our national three-star championships, um, in October. Um, it was the largest number of horses that we've had, and to the point where I think we all can start to talk about having a different way of actually qualifying for it and making the qualifications for it harder because the level has finally gotten um, to the point where I think it, it asks for that. And um, that also has a, a, a three-year-old component to it um, and a two-year-old component, which is in hand. Um, and we'll get into how that, how that is scoring a little bit later. And so the question that we um, has started then coming up with the first stage now being successful. Right now you can qualify just through one um, qualifying um, competition that are held around, uh, around the country. Um, or whether we would put that to two, um, having different judges to be able to do that, and again, raising the level. I must say out of the dressage world with Scott's presentation, I think the idea of the ranking thing is huge. Um, and I think it would be very beneficial uh, for the advertising of it and also the competitive nature a year round instead of just having the competitive nature really just be at the end. So I think that is an idea that we'd like to <clears throat> play around with and take that back. Um, but the question then becomes, <clears throat> as with what we've seen around the world, is the six and seven year olds. <clears throat> and we can definitely track, as we'll see as we come up, um, the six and seven year olds uh, very much can track that these horses can come up into what we would see the four-star level. Um, and the world championships, that young horse championships that we have are in, in Lyon, uh, in France. Um, that is an extremely popular, um, very, very competitive section, especially the seven-year-old section for the two-star. Um, it is a seriously, seriously competitive nature. And now around the world, we seem to be having these competitions, though some of them are open uh, in stages that are coming up, I'd have to say the unofficial world championships for eight and nine-year-olds would be at Bukolo in Holland um, in, in um, uh, the 1st of October, which is a Nations Cup and a, and a team competition that the same thing. But the level and mainly the European riders are using it for their eight and nine-year-olds. Um, that is a very, very hot competition um, and seriously can track those horses going on to the next level. In England, they have the Burley Young Horse Event Series, which is now started in 1999 uh, for four and five-year-olds. That has, again, produced uh, good champions um, with a regional program that they have around. Um, and then they have a larger one with this KBIS, the, the British uh, Breeding Association, British Eventing Young Horse Championships, um, and for a larger group as a whole between four and seven-year-olds. And Australia has a four and six-year-old. So if we can go on there. I think um, these are actually the lists of some of these horses that have gone on to um, four-star competition. The ones in red are the ones that are coming out of Lyon. Uh, the ones in blue, um, which is um, just from Britain, is the Burley Young Horse uh, Championship. Um, and um, one of the interesting kind of facts and figures is about this is that coming through Lyon and um, is that 43% of the top finishers in these level of competitions have gone on to have success at the three and the four star level. That's a huge number, actually. And a credit to their programs as they go on. Um, and um, the, the ones at the end, the ones in green, are the, the Burley Young Horse, and the other ones are the British Young Horse Championships. Um, the, the Burley ones just being four and five year olds. And so our thing here in the United States is um, looking to add on to what the USEA or our affiliate has already done with the four and five-year-olds. Um, I would say that we would like to enter 
conversations with the USEA about bringing their championship here, like with dressage in the year's future, because I think the prestige of having the multiple discipline competition is really important. Um, three of the horses that were in uh, Lyon th that were extremely successful is that anybody that knows our sport would actually know this horse quite well. This is Sam, uh, Biscotec Sam from Germany, who is the gold medal winner uh, in the last Olympic Games and the World Championships. Um, the uh, Germany, if I might have this fact correct, I think in the world, in the Olymp last Olympic Games, three of the four horses actually came through their, the young horse Bundes, in the Bundes Championships. So um, that has been a very successful program. The third horse here is Mighty Nice, written by Philip Dutton, um, who was also in the Young Horse Championship. And the other horse was the winner here at Rolex, um, and uh, Quimbo, ridden by Andrew Nicholson. Um, it's actually a Spanish bred horse, but was in the Young Horse Championships in England. Um, Andrew uh, has a contact with a thoroughbred breeder uh, in Spain. Uh, he goes down and buys four to five three-year-olds every year. Um, and most of the horses that he's actually won here in the last three or four years have all come out of that program. And, they, and he competes them all in the young horse program as we go on. So how do we, how do we answer this call for getting a pipeline and building on this four and five-year-old that is uh, already successful um, and growing um, and go on to the six and seven year olds. So the current program that we have here are the yearling to three year olds all done in hand. The four year old, five year old, which is young horse, event horse. And we do have a championship at the six and seven year olds, which is done at the three star level. It's not hugely prestigious because there's no qualifying um, for it. Um, just for education wise, um, out of the four sports here, we are the ones that have to qualify to get to the next level. So you have to qualify um, to get to a, a one equivalent of a one star, you have to qualify to get to a two star, you have to qualify to get to the three star, you have to qualify to get to the four star. It's quite a rigorous program. Um, realistically, the qualifications takes you three years, which is a good thing, um, to get up to the four star level. That would be about the fastest that you could do it, and certainly we would, we don't encourage that. Um, that the um, we would like we like that longer. So the horses develop the strength um, to be able to compete at the four-star level. So we are proposing in, um, in, our, in a little bit later on that we actually change uh, that c the CCI to a CIC. Um, that's all, I know, uh, doesn't mean anything to you, but the CCI basically is your, what was the old three-day event, okay? And it's a long format. Uh, and the CIC is a short format of what would be equivalent to what we do at regular horse trials. Our sport is basically designed in some ways that the CCI, okay, ones like Rolex here, um, ones like uh, Jersey Fresh, those are like running a marathon. And we would do the equivalent of running 10K races, three or four 10K races, to get to a marathon. So the horse trials and these CICs are the equivalent of these 10K races getting ready for the marathon. And you have to qualify all the way through, and um, even that qualification can now, in this last two years, be taken away from you, um, and you get downgraded because you're not showing competence at the level that you're at. And so it adds a lot of complexities in our sport to what we would propose as a young horse to make sure that when somebody is coming through and they are trying to produce a six-year-old and they're producing a seven-year-old, that we actually don't take that opportunity them, take that, uh, that opportunity away from them to actually get a qualification at the same time, which is why we're proposing what we're about to propose. So the young horse, um, what we would look at is that the six-year-olds would compete at the preliminary or the, for the qualifiers, the uh, preliminary and the CIC uh, one-star level. Uh, the preliminary and the CIC are actually the same thing, but one's an FEI competition and the preliminary is the national level. Okay, you need both to be able to qualify to go up the level. The seven-year-olds would compete at the intermediate or the CIC two-star level. And then we have uh, proposed that we would have uh, uh, qualifiers around the country. I think 15, we, we picked originally, we picked 15 from um, around the whole country. Um, kind of really done on a demographic basis. Uh, not, ge not just geographical. Um, and 
have those qualifiers then lead to a final, which would be here, and it would be a CIC. That way, those horses would actually get a qualification, and then they could go on and do a CCI, okay, or or the long format. Um, so they the horses have to achieve a national qualifying result, which is in this qualifying thing. You have to have at least a 50% uh, score in dressage. You have to have no more than uh, one problem on the cross country, one stop, okay, and you have to have just under a certain amount of rails um, in the show jumping. Um, and we would propose that it, you would do that at a minimum of two qualifiers. We would like to get that also down to the four and five year olds. Okay, qualifying events, and hopefully, I think this ranking idea is a great idea. We could have it have it that way. And the list would be, you know, held by us. And, and again, I really like the ranking idea about making it public so that it becomes a challenge to them. So um, the final would be held here, um, you know, at this championship. Um, and that final would be, um, again, at the CIC two-star level. Um, a lot of it, uh, the negotiations or the conversations that we're trying to have as we go on is actually the timing of that so it fits the calendar because, again, in our sport, because of this idea, the quality of running a marathon, after you run a marathon, you have a downtime and you have a rest and recuperation time that can be extensive, six, to six weeks or seven weeks, really. You can't do too many of these things or, or the horses can't keep up with it, nor are the riders. Um, and so with this program, we would, we, that CIC, you know, the, the idea of the 10K race, the CIC would have to fit into the calendar of these horses going on to their, to their championship um, of, at the, at the longer format, the CCI. So that's why we're proposing the CIC one and two star level. There is a, uh, there's been a conversation about having an FEI competition and uh, keeping this more of a, uh, along the lines of some of the other ones, which is purely subjective. And um, we feel like there's gonna be, there should be really a balance between the two for a seven year old to make it um, attractive to um, our riders and competitors and our owners and our breeders, that the four and five year old is a completely, uh, again, a subjective thing done m much like um, some of the other sports, the dressage score, which is 15% of the score, total score, um, is a one score at the end. It is, a, it is a percentage at the end. It is not, <laughs> sorry, I know I'm jumping around here, but, <laughs> 15% um, is the, 35% uh, uh, is the dressage test, 15% is in hand of the confirmation, and then 50% is the, the jumping and galloping side of it. We would like to think about adding something like that into this six and seven year old class. So this six, six and seven year old class, though you would run a regular competition and an FEI competition, and you would get that qualification that would then lead you to be able to do a long format, we would also propose in many different ways that we would add the subjective side to it, of confirmation in hand, and especially type of gallop. Because we have found that in the end, I had alluded to it earlier, that the difference between uh, a three-star horse and a four-star horse is enormous. And the difference between, like in dressage, the difference between a present George horse, a small tour horse, and a large tour horse, the full Grand Prix horse, can be quite different in the way that their strength is, the way their bodies are. And ours really re revolves around the gallop, which is why um, so much of the, the look um, and the subjective look has to be about the gallop for a four-star horse. The horse can have a tremendous amount of jump. He can also be tremendously uh, a good mover, but his action in those two aspects not, might not allow him to be able to do what we would call 11 and a half minute course. And there's a huge difference between a nine and a 10 minute course and an 11 and a half minute or 12 minute course. And it is a huge difference. And the type of gallop then becomes a bigger factor as it goes on. So the, so the subjective side, though you would get your qualification, um, is something that we're looking into um, adding into the aspect of this competition. So um, that side of it, the gallop, for a true, what we would call a true four-star horse, um, would be assessed. Yep. Um, question for you, David. Uh, when you talk about the gallop and the gallop being different, have you uh, explored um, 
objective criteria of measuring the gallop in, tor in terms of step time? Um, we haven't. In that aspect, it's still being done really by horsemen of their um, four-star riders and uh, four-star judges um, instead of having it from an objective side. Uh, it could be something you look into um, because it certainly is not it's about step time. I would totally agree with, you know, coming from your racing background uh, and not just length of stride. It's uh, our, our sport, I will have to say, our sport has changed a lot in the last 10 years. The last uh, full format three-day event um, that was where we had steeplechase and roads and tracks and up to a 13-minute course. That last event was in 2002. And there really was a huge pendulum swing um, in our sport away from a thoroughbred, thinking that everybody thought that the um, shorter, a little bit the shorter distances, um, and the sport went that way for a while and now has come back, um, that the shorter distances would lead more to having um, a horse that has a lot more warm, what quote unquote warm blood, blood in him, um, where the dressage and show jumping has been quite, um, it would become way more influential. What has realistically happened is, is that the dressage so much hasn't become more technical. It is just that more people have become better. Um, the requirements of the dressage tests are actually not that different than they were even 10 or 12 years ago. It's just that the expertise has grown exponentially, I think. The show jumping has gotten harder. We are now jumping where well, we used to jump a meter 20 after quite heavy rails and deeper cups. We're now jumping a meter 30 at the top level. Um, on a lighter with a much lighter rail and the horses the quality that has actually improved the show jumping quite a lot one of the things that has uh, Really happened is that we've also found between the two different disciplines and when I say disciplines the CIC This 10k equivalent of a 10k race usually runs its show jumping before the cross-country and the CCI this equivalent of a marathon runs the show jumping after the cross-country that is a huge difference in the shape and the quality and the carefulness of what the horses are. And I think the sport is still grappling with that a little bit. Um, and, but what has driven here in the last, what we found really here in the last five or six years is the predominance of the thoroughbred blood still has to stay in our sport. And mainly because of the gallop. Because the gallop and also what, how they come through it for the next day to be able to jump. And the um, predominance of the thoroughbred blood is though the days are, have been numbered of the second career of a thoroughbred, right? An X race horse, they're few and far between at the top levels. So it's more of a purpose bred event horse that has a tremendous amount of thoroughbreds, thoroughbred in it. And obviously one of the ones that are always leading the pack are the Germans, again, because 10 years ago they started that process and uh, put a lot of lighter thoroughbred blood into the horses that they pick for eventing. And now you are seeing the results of a decision that was made 10 or 12 years ago, okay, by their, by their really, um, you know, their exceptional com competitiveness right now where eight or nine years ago, they, they, it wasn't. And it was a thought out process. Um, and they were really the first ones that actually didn't go running. They, they went, they kept the thoroughbred into it and put a strong thoroughbred lines into it. Um, David, I, I actually have two questions. Um, say you have a horse that goes cross country and gets a refusal and then goes into the show jumping and gets uh, four, four or five poles down. Um, in the other disciplines, they're talking about forgiving, you know, some of that. But it sounds to me like in eventing, you're not necessarily going to overlook that as much. So do they have to first you know, meet that sort of criteria and then? Well, one of the things you want to remember in, the, in this proposal of the CIC, we would do, be doing the show jumping before we would be doing the cross country. And, um, and so the, somebody that is technically eliminated on the cross country as their last phase, I think there could be an, uh, they're gonna lose a qualification, number one. But wh how that fits into how we would, with the subjective side, um, I think that could all be talked about. But one of the things that has been driven from our sport is that they, whatever they want to do, they would like to have this as an ability to qualify also. And if they do something like that, they're going to end up losing their, they, they won't be able to qualify. Um, okay, so a, a good example I think um, was at, um, 
at Fair Hill where the one rider in, in Jersey Fresh had had seven rails down and then she worked on her show jumping and, and won the class. So that, that's what I'm thinking if you see beyond the, the fall of the fences. But my other question to you is about the long format. Do you think with these um, young, young, young horse championships that they'll do more into the long format? Because it sort of, I think, is a better education for them to do the whole, the whole route, I would think. Well, I mean, there's, there's two sides to it. And again, we have to figure out how you tie this into a competition in, or a, a, you know, a competition environment like this is, you know, where we're talking about multiple, di multiple disciplines. The difference between running a full CCI cost-wise, um, you know, land-wise, and um, just organization-wise is a huge difference between running a CCI. And we always have very, very established good CCIs um, already in the country that I think are good proving grounds for where horses come from. And so that's really why we've leaned over towards the doing it at CIC, um, where we feel like the physical requirements of the endurance side are, are not there. So it would be part of a process still of the education of these horses leading on to their next level instead of feeling like it's at the end of a level. So I think it, there's cost analysis kind of things that have to do with a competition like this that are huge. Um, even, running a, even running a CIC, bringing that side of it, um, which we felt like was important, um, still adds a lot to something like this. Because remember, we don't just have to prepare one ring. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, ground, uh, full course, uh, show jumping and dressage with the three different disciplines that we have is, is, uh, is an undertaking. And, w and there's no question we're going to have to bring some of our people in our sport to come out and support this on a financial basis. There's no question. Okay, so um, the um, I think that's really where um, we're looking at going. I know tomorrow we'll talk a little bit more about the judging um, and the score side, but um, this is something that we um, have uh, looked to um, kind of bridge a gap as much as anything else between the four and five year olds. Um, that are already uh, have a program and is completely done off a subjective side and coming into more the competitive side, which is what the rest of the world has done um, with this Leon competition. And how do, we, how do we bridge that gap? And this is our proposal as we come forward in this CIC <laughs> program for the six and seven year olds to kind of get to the next level of something that is already quite successful with the four and five year olds. We have started to start to look at plugging the holes because here in the United States where so many times in the past Olympic teams and the World Championship teams, oh, you were sitting on a lot of American bred horses. We only had one in the last Olympic Games and World Championships together. We only had one American bred horse in the whole, in the last two major championships. And that's just not acceptable for us, really. Um, especially with, uh, with the ability to, as breeding has changed in the way we've done. But I think as our sport has evolved and changed, due to a lot of different circumstances. Where I see our sport now is going on to is actually purpose-bred event horses. And that has only just started. And only really in the last two or three years are we really having specific horses that are bred for eventing, okay? And I really do believe that in the four and the five-year-olds, there's no question that the training should be the same straight across the board um, with our element of gallop and then we'd need to start to look at that in the six and seven year olds or those six and seven year olds have that ability in our mind, not just to compete and be competitive over a five, six minute course, which is what a CCI is, but do we have a subjective thing that we actually feel that in the end that horse, it has the ability to do an 11 and a half minute course, which is where our world championships are and where some of our Olympic games are. One of the other things I just want to talk about, we actually, we actually prepare for three different competitions three years in a row. <laughs> and the Pan American Games is done at the two-star level, which is the same level as the seven-year-olds are doing. The Olympic Games are done at the three-star level with two show jumpings. And the World Championships are done, so, the, and so that usually is a 10-minute course. And then the World Championships are 11 half to 12-minute course, back-to-back -back years. And so not necessarily is the horse that actually is going to be great at the World Championships, and this is going to be very clear this time because it's an endurance test. Um, 
the horse that is a really, really good world championship is not necessarily your Olympic champion. Sam is one of the few, few and far between with that. So it's very much a sport that we have to prepare a little bit for different things because every time you go in your championship, you're not necessarily preparing for the same length of course. And the length of the course becomes a true issue as we go on.